Reinvention is everything, especially for a potter. Like so many potters are just sort of trapped in their garrets in Vermont, making the same mug over and over and over again, never shaving anything or trimming a hair on their body anywhere. And so as a potter, I've learned early on that you have to reinvent all the time. One of my favorite examples of reinvention is one of my favorite restaurants, Cafe Boulou. It's here on the Upper East Side near my Madison Avenue store, and it's an iconic restaurant. I eat there all the time. And what I love about it is they take classic French food and reinvent it. They take the classics and make them feel fresh. I've eaten at Cafe Boulou a million times, but I've never met the chef, Gavin, and I'm so excited because today I'm gonna go over and meet him. Hey, hey, hey. How are you? Good, how are you? such a pleasure to meet you. Likewise, thanks for being here. Dude, thank you for having me. I am like obsessed, I'm a fan. I've rocked your restaurants all over awesome. Palm Beach, New York, and yeah. I am so excited to be at the epicenter, the nucleus of where it all happens. What's interesting to me is how close our lives are together as far as design is concerned and all of that, because you live off of all of those inspirations and so do I. Totes. I just get to feed people. Yes. And get them really drunk. <laughs> well, you know what? One of the things I love about what you do is that I love that it's like classic French cuisine, mm -hmm. something totally familiar, but you put your own spin on it. Mm -hmm. That's sort of how I roll in my own oeuvre. I grew up in Minnesota. So in my world, the way that I was raised and the way that I grew up, it's nothing like this. I was 15 years old when I started to cook professionally in a real kitchen. I was more excited to go to work and do Friday and Saturday night service than I was to go to the party. When I'm here at this restaurant, it's so funny to see how cooking there and then being able to come here and cook similar food here. Yeah. But we've transformed it, we've changed it, we've been inspired through different people, we've been inspired through different times, through ingredients, and then the food is completely different, which is exciting. All right, I'm probably like the wrong person to be here talking about food because I'm boring. I eat like 10 things. It's a roast chicken. Right. It's a sweet potato, it's an apple pie. Like, it's simple. I never believe it when I go to some restaurant and they're doing like hoof to tail and the waiter comes over and they're always like, hey, so today um, we have a tripe. It's really great. It's gonna be served with like fresh radishes. And I'm like, really? Are you like going home at night and being like, ah, oh, tough day at the office, I need some tripe. <laughs> no, nobody wants tripe. <laughs> Discuss. What I love about this restaurant is that it doesn't always have to be French. I mean, we, we're allowed to be American because I'm American. So I decided to do fried chicken which is the exact Yum. opposite of what you expect at this restaurant. The best part was walking in the dining room at night and half of the dining room is filled with people eating fried chicken and drinking thousands of dollars of wine. The way that they would smile, you could feel like you would hit like a childhood moment for them. Right. And I think being able to reinterpret something like that and just, you know, in your mind, it's so simple to do something like that. You know? Yes. Ugh. If I became a billionaire, I would imprison you as like a chef full That's time. That's it, right? You'd yes. have to pay me a lot of money. Let me bring you back to my studio. All right, let's check it out. Okay, so we do some dishes that are riffs on the classics. Mm -hmm. We do some dishes that are brand new. I know you're a fan of chicken pie yard. So we're gonna, we're gonna do a riff on that today as well. But we just kind of want to walk through a little bit of the steps and have you see like how we get inspired through food, design, and through fashion. Because in our life, just like in yours, colors and textures are so important and so apparent. All right, so this is a dish. It's a really classic, old school, like cafe blue dish. We have palm anna. It's shaved potatoes, very thin, mm -hmm. and we cook them in duck fat. Spinach subrique, which is basically quiche without mm -hmm. too much egg. And then we have the classic beef, braised beef short rib. Oh my god. Look at that. Uh, this is agridolce. It's uh, caramelized oh onions with vinegar, red wine, salt, pepper. Incredible. All right, now I'm dying to know what goes here. All right, so then we have a piece of beef that we roasted. Nice. This is, this is a bavette. All right, can I get real here? Yeah. How do you design this? The first thing is, is like aesthetically, how's the guest gonna see it, right? In many ways, it's such kind of a classic riff on something that I almost think it's like a very sophisticated TV dinner. Like I've separated everything for you. Which I love you know the separation. I, mean? <laughs> I like the minimalism. Yeah. It's so chic. I think sometimes less is more in plates like this, right? Oh, it's gorgeous. You know? Gorgeous. So you're gonna teach me pie art. So it's a classic. You love it, huh? You eat it every day? I'm like super habity. Yeah. So it's like okay. chicken pie art with arugula, salad, and parmesan. And then, so I'm like light and lively during the day. Got it. And then at night, basically, I just like, Destroy I'm like, everything. like, like just eat until I just die. Yeah, good. I love All that. Right. So for this chicken pie art, we're gonna butterfly it. Ah, is that the key to a pie art? That's the key to the, the, the pounding, the beginning step of the pie art. You're not grossed out by touching chicken? Not at all. Are you? Really? Yeah, totally. Why? I don't know, chicken, like this. You eat it every day, you can't be grossed out. Yeah, I don't want to touch it though. So, a little bit of oil. Now, pound it. 
No, you gotta get in there though. You gotta be pissed. I'm irate. This would get out all my rage. And what does pie arting do? It tenderizes it. Do you ever um, pie art your employees? <laughs> no. <laughs> tempted? No. Well, tempted and doing are two different things. Yeah. All right, so that's the pie art. So right. now we're grilling it. So he's Yum. Gonna, he's going to start to grill. All right, so we're going to mix up your regular arugula and parmesan action. All right, good. These I, are pretty insane. What's that? That's fried stuffing. I can't. You have to. I can't. You have a choice. I hate you. <laughs> I love you. That's it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Before you do anything to it, I want yeah. to understand what you're going to do to it. Think of it like this. You, right now, if you walk through Central Park, you see part grass, part orange leaves, part all of it, right? It's fall. So it's all over the place. Totes. In my mind, that's basically all you can do to this, is you can just build off of it because it's flat. And then somehow in all of that, I've got to give it saltiness, sweetness, and acidity, right? Otherwise, the hell's the point. Right. Let's just go for it. All right, let me see what you do. Okay. Bring it. I'm intrigued. I'm getting a polka dot effect. I love a polka dot. Now we've um, built a little bit of the design. Acorn squash. Let's see if we can cut a little bit. Maybe we can stand some up. I think it's your only height element, so you better get higher. And then the kale. It's very futuristic. Like, I'm getting like a... Uh, kind of a Meet the Jetsons feel. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Fried stuffing, oh. which is great texture. Yes. Um, fried say. Yum. Mm -hmm. So this is just a little bit of reduced chicken chew. Yum. Mm. All right, literally, this is going on your menu. Like, every woman in New York City is going to eat this every day for lunch. I promise you. Let's taste it. Tell me what you think. If it gets your seal of approval, it has a 90% chance of going on the menu. And what might it be called? Well, this is the chicken pie art designed by Jonathan Adams. Bonjour. Bon right. appetit. Oh, God, this is so delicious. Destroy it. Delish, right? Killing it. Perfect. That's Now you can get away from the arugula and the parmesan. I don't love you. Love it. <laughs> that is the best chicken pie art I've ever had in my Thank life. Thank you. That really, seriously, like yeah. I know we're on camera and everything, but that is like next level. This is ending up on the menu, right? This is ending up on the menu for you. No, but like I'm serious. Like, yeah, this no, is going it's amazing, yeah. No, I don't believe uh, you. Try me. On the menu. It's on. This has been eye-opening and delightful and delicious and fattening. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you, man. Boom. Thanks for the inspiration. Thank you. Dude, I kind of feel like I'm at the Parker. Well, remember we got that great direction, which was to make a place that we would want to go to ourselves. Et voila. Yeah. But you know what is rad? You made it feel like it was just always there. That's perfect, because if you see the hand, if it seems like a contrived or that it's been overworked or overthought or overdone, then it kind of kills the magic. Judy's work looks effortless, effortless glamour.